You want to hear some music? You'd like that, wouldn't you? Well, today you're going to get all the music you want. The request lines are now open, KGFJ Soul Radio. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Do it now, man. Do it now. Request, request lines, lines are up. <laughs> it's open, man. <laughs> Got any Blue Oyster Cult? No, I don't have any Blue Oyster Cult. I ate 34 pairs last time around. Where were you? It was that close to working at 7-Eleven, you know. Pass the word along. Tell the men it's time to shoot the moon. Shoot the moon! Not out there on the microphone. On the microphone. Shoot the moon. Shoot the moon. The attitude dictates that you don't care whether she comes, stays, lays, or prays. I mean, whatever happens, your toes are still tapping. Hey, Strawberry! Oh, Strawberry. Hey, what's happening, man? How you doing? This is my friend. Hey, how you doing, man? What you looking at, man? Oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> I, I wasn't looking. I was just... I wasn't looking at his neck, man. Can you honestly tell me that you forgot the magnetism of Robin Zander or the charisma of Rick Nielsen? That's kid stuff. Kid stuff? Well, how about the tunes? I want you to want me. The dream police. Da -da 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 -da. Build your muscles picking strawberries. You know, band and stoop. Maybe I could get you a job with United Fruit. I got a buddy with United Fruit. Start with strawberries, you might work your way up to these goddamn bananas. Win, boy. Are you going to get your act together? We're creating a society of cell phone crazed, marijuana smoking zombies. Coming to you not quite live from lukewarm Tallboy Studios deep in the land of Gar, this is Bend and Scoop, the podcast featuring music, mirth, and minutia, focused on exposing artists you probably haven't heard but should. I'm Bob, and I'll be your tour guide on this amazingly asymmetric auditory adventure as we journey to the center of your cochlea. Welcome to episode 17. Grab a seat anywhere you like. Joining us at the end of the show for our grooving after party will be our very special guest, John, from the Combing the Stacks podcast, who will be sharing his own personal musical journey with us while playing a round of Is That Your Vinyl Answer? We spread the gospel of vinyl here at Bend and Scoop, so be sure to tell us all about your favorite neighborhood record store by posting to at Ben Scoop on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Spin Mom and Pop. Our record store of the week is Panther City Vinyl in Fort Worth, Texas. I was just there recently and scored some great records, including a rare blue vinyl pressing of Live Stiffs Live from 1978, featuring Nick Lowe, Elvis Costello, Ian Dury, and others from the Stiff Records stable back in those days. You can follow Panther City Vinyl on Instagram and Facebook at Panther City Vinyl, or you can check out their website at panthercityvinyl.com. Let's kick things off with some high-energy tunage from the Jim Jones Review out of London off their 2010 album Burning Your House Down. This is Righteous Wrong on Bend and Scoop. Jesus in a strip of the game Let 
But just for one kiss, baby For one kiss Whether you know it or not, excitement is back in radio. TM's new bag, a top 40 package with balls. From TM, Image 73. 66, WBC. Really great down and dirty stuff there from Jesus Sons out of LA with No Trespassing Blues off 2015's Bring It On Home. Just a quick reminder about a new podcast I've started called Assume the Juxtaposition, where you're the host and I'm the guest. If you want to host an episode, 
Send your topic pitch to me at lukewarmtallboy at gmail.com. The second episode, hosted by Matthew Pisania, is all about the Garage Rock Revival and is currently available on Spotify. You can follow Assume the Juxtaposition on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at AssumeTJPod. This next band hails from the capital of Pennsylvania, Harrisburg. From their 2014 album Youngstown Tune-Up, which is slang for a car bomb, these are the Jelly Bricks with Home on Bend and Scoop. my ass. Not on this side, not on that side, but right in the middle. <laughs> What you need 
That's the Insomniacs with Yeah 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 from their 2011 album Just Enjoy It. I really dig their retro vibe. Don't forget to check out our Bend and Scoop Spotify playlist where you can hear that one and 95.2% of all the songs we've played on all 17 episodes. That's right, 4.8% of our stuff is even too obscure for Spotify. Up next is Jeffrey Dean Foster. No, he doesn't play Negan on The Walking Dead. That's Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Anyway, from his 2014 album The Arrow, here's Not Negan with Life is Sweet on Bend and Scoop.
former Guided by Voices member Tobin Sprout with The Man I Used to Know off his brand new solo record Empty Horses. If you like what you hear on Bend and Scoop, please subscribe, rate, and review us at Apple Podcasts. We really do value your feedback. Here's former Wilco member and noted Jeff Tweedy adversary, the late great Jay Bennett, along with Edward Birch, from their 2002 album The Palace at 4am Part 1. This is Talk to Me on Bend and Scoop.
got something, Rudy? I think it's time we settle this once and for all. Chinese downhill. 40 bucks a man, winner takes all. Yeah, it is the only way. Chinese downhill. Oh, and uh, Rudy, to bring the trophy, I think it should go to the real champion. I am the champion. But the Chinese downhill will decide everything. Yeah, it is a great Chinese downhill. What does the fucker is a Chinese down here? Jennifer called, told me about her latest admirer Said, someone should make a pamphlet called So you think you're in love with Jennifer They're all guys with steady girlfriends Panicking at where they're at Jenny, please Let's never become like that Skipping across the ocean When the Melbourne summer is endless And the warm wind leaves you helpless Life's too good To become someone else's Become someone else's Become someone else's Hasn't anyone told you what your fangs are for? Little bodies That lonesome feeling And what it tells us Sleeping on my arm Till it becomes someone else's Sleeping on my arm Till it becomes someone else's Someone else
Gothenburg, Sweden's favorite son, Jens Lechman there with Become Someone Else's off 2012's I Know What Love Isn't. Don't forget to stick around for the end of the show when our special guest John from the Combing the Stacks podcast will join us for our Groovin' After Party. Earlier in the show, we had a former nemesis of Jeff Tweedy, and now we have a frequent collaborator of his, Jim O'Rourke, from his 2001 album Insignificance. This one really speaks to our collective experience this year, all downhill from here on Bend and Scoop.
Have you ever been to a rock and roll recital? There's one coming your way December 29th in the Fairgrounds Coliseum. Six hours of total rock and roll starring Johnny Winter, one of the greatest rock guitarists today. The holiday concert for 1973 is at the Coliseum. Six hours of the hottest rock and roll this year starring Johnny Winter, the James Gang, Spirit, the New York Dolls, and Let me tell you about Brownsville Station. December 29th, 5 p.m. at the Coliseum. I'm alive and well. Ooh. I'm alive and well. I'm still alive and well. Tickets are only $5. Get yours now at Ross and Babcock, Ross and Young, all 12 Union Federal offices, and the usual out of town locations. seems like it'd be a great sloppy bar sing-along, don't it? From 2005's Laughter's Fifth, that's Brooklyn's Love is Laughter with Dirty Lives. Recording a podcast like this really works up my appetite. I'm so hungry I could eat just about anything, even a hot dog. They're fast. They're fun-loving. They're fearless. They're nuts. You catching it? <laughs> By day, they're the finest hot dogging, freestyle skiers in the world. By night, they really take chances. You busy for dinner? 
Now that's a girl I can take advantage of. This is the motion picture comedy that's proud to go downhill fast. Out of the way! The movie that defies the forces of gravity. Sanity. And good taste. Hot Dog, the movie. Experience all the ducking, flipping, turning, chugging, jumping, sliding, gliding, speeding action you can take. And that's just in the hot tub. Oh boy. Gasp at stunts. Only a team of world-class madmen would dare to attempt. The dreaded Chinese downhill. And the greatest challenge of all, Playboy's Playmate of the Year, Shannon Tweed. Thank you. It's the fastest, hottest, feet in the air, head in the hot tub comedy of the long, cold winter. So grab your bowls and kiss your buns goodbye. It's Hot Dog, the movie.
people listen to people. So listen, people. Welcome to the Grieving After Party. Come on in and pour yourself a cold one. Joining me in our Grooving After Party here on Bend and Scoop is John from Combing the Stacks. So, Correct. John, if you would, tell everybody a little bit about your podcast. Sure. At the most basic level, it's three friends who went to grad school together, went to tens of fifties of hundreds of concerts over the years. And, you know, quarantine happens and we finally decided that it might be time to start talking about some of our favorite albums and maybe getting used to some albums we didn't know as well. Uh, So we went way back to the sixties to start. What we try to do is cover three albums every episode. And we've been covering the top 100 albums as ranked by besteveralbums.com. Awesome. And I, believe on your most recent episode, you're up into the 70s now. Is that correct? We are still the, midway through the 60s. Well, I meant in, I meant in the number of the top 100. I, I should have phrased that better. <laughs> oh, no. no Brett, you're 100% right. Yep, we are into the 70s right now in terms of numerical order, but 60s in terms of album decade. Yeah. Well, it's a really great concept. I'm glad somebody's taking a deep dive and looking into that. So uh, I guess the plan is though, once you get through those, then next the seventies and eighties and so forth. You got it. We're going to go try to go seventies, eighties, nineties, all the way through to to the modern day. So as long as people keep listening. Awesome. And uh, is it a weekly podcast? It is right now. It's a weekly podcast. We tape on Wednesday nights. And so it comes out usually Thursday around two o'clock in the afternoon. Just out of curiosity, where did you guys go to grad school? We all went to the University of Florida together in the counselor education program. Gators. There you go. You got it. Are you still in that area or where are you at now? You know, it's funny. We, we actually all are not from Florida and we all do not live in Florida anymore. So it's <laughs> no knock on Florida, but we've all spread out. So we've got one in Massachusetts. We've got one in Northern Virginia. And then I am right on the border of D.C. and Maryland. Let's learn a little bit about your own personal musical sure. journey. And uh, we'll play a round of what I like to call, is that your vinyl answer? A little, okay, gotcha. little tribute to the uh, late, great Regis. We'll start off with just a uh, straightforward, what was the first record you ever bought with your own money? It was Ario Speedwagon, Wheels Are Turning, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Wow. At age six. I don't know if I could be considered to have bought it, but I had heard the song, I Can't Fight This Feeling Anymore. And yes. so uh, I was taken to the store and my parents purchased it for me. But that was the first I ever remember asking to buy. So <laughs> Definitely less embarrassing than mine. Mine was a Captain and Tennille album. So. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Well, <laughs> both, both of us probably could have more, uh, answers a little bit more clout, couldn't we? But hey, their honesty's big too. I mean, kids are kids. You just do what you do when you're that age, right? Uh, you do you remember where it was that you bought it? Uh, yep. It was in a Tower record store at my local mall. Now, by any chance, do you still have it? I I think as of about five or six years ago, I did, but then I made the plunge with my CDs, you know, with Spotify, Apple, stuff like iTunes, you know, it, with the move, it just didn't seem like holding on to all of my CDs made sense anymore. So I had to make some business decisions. And I think that REO Speedwagon might have been a uh, <laughs> decision at that point. Yeah. That's uh, certainly understandable. Mm-hmm. Which band or artist albums do you own the most of? Oh, that's a great question. In terms of the the number of albums from a band, it is probably R.E.M. Because I, oh. I own each R.E.M. album. So okay. I, I think that's up to about 17 or 18 if we go straight forward, if I remember correctly. So it's either them or probably the Rolling Stones, just because I have a lot of odds and ends from them. Now, for both of those, R.E.M. and the Rolling Stones, what would be your favorite album for each of those? Oh, that's a great question. Probably Let It Bleed for the Stones, for sure. And I'm pretty comfortable saying Let It Bleed and Sticky Fingers are one and two pretty directly. R.E.M., man, that's a tough one. I love Murmur. I love Fables of the Reconstruction more than most people do. And I do love Automatic for the People. So um, it's like picking your favorite child, right? It's hard to pick between those three.
three. If you forced me to pick one on a desert island, probably would pick Murmur. I lean toward kind of an underrated one myself, New Adventures in Hi-Fi. I think that's... Oh, I uh, love that album. Yep. Yeah, that's one that doesn't get as much attention, but for a latter era, R.E.M., that, I think that holds its own, definitely. Especially the circumstances of how they recorded that. They basically wrote that on the Monster Tour, right? If I remember correctly. Yeah, I think, and, I think yeah. so. And that was a pretty crazy tour. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Is there any specific album that you've had to replace the most over the years? I think the album I've purchased the most amount of times is probably Appetite for Destruction by Guns N' Roses because I've purchased it at three separate times that I can remember. So that would probably be the fit. I also do have that on vinyl, even though in the era that it was released, it was not a, a vinyl friendly era. But exactly. you know, with the reissues, that's probably the one I, I can remember buying the most amount of times. That's probably a pretty popular choice as far as that category goes. I think any album that has that many record sales is going to have a lot of multiple purchases. Involved. You got yeah, it's something like Rumors by Fleetwood Mac, right? I imagine people yeah. bought that album like Four Fire or Boston, right? You know, yeah, those Back in Black would be one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Who among your friends and family would you say has the largest vinyl collection? One of the guys that does Combing the Stacks with me, Matt has a pretty fair sized vinyl collection. I do have a friend, Jeff, who he has a always a bigger vinyl collection than I can remember. And the reason is because he has a lot of ambient music. So that Brian Eno, he's got a lot of stuff from that era. He's got a lot of vintage soul. He's got a lot of Latin music from the late 60s. And then he's got select other albums that he just loved the sound of. So, you know, some Beatles albums and stuff like that. So he, he probably is going on about 150 vinyl albums. So he probably would have the biggest collection that I know. How many do you currently have? I am deficient in the area of vinyl. I probably only have about 20 vinyl albums. Is that a collection uh, you're building? I'd like to think it is a collection I'm building. I tend to not be a collector per se. I tend to always be interested in what's coming or looking back. And so that omnivore nature of listening doesn't lend itself to re-listening to stuff all the time. And I don't know if that keeps me from purchasing vinyl, but I, I could definitely see that growing over the future years. And I'm going to inherit some albums as well from various uncles who have quite a few of them. And I look forward to that. So it will grow organically. Hopefully not anytime soon, but right. when the time comes, yes. It'll be unfortunate, but it'll be a nice remembrance of, uh, of your uncles. Yes, nice postscript. Especially since I listened to so many of those albums growing up from my father and my uncles as well. Um, and it's a formative part of how I learned music, to be honest. Yeah, I was talking the other day with a friend and so much of my love of music came from my dad and mm -hmm. the eight tracks he listened to in the car when we'd be on road trips. One of my sons has kind of picked up a few things he's heard in the car, although most of the time he's got his own earbuds in, but every now and then <laughs> something will bleed over and he'll ask, what's that, dad? Or he'll just shazam it or something. That's a great tool. I can't tell you how many times I've done that in a restaurant or a bar, just a song that I'm trying to place. It's like the greatest app ever, isn't it? If we had had Shazam and Spotify when we were kids. But then I wouldn't have stories like reading the name, say, Sonic Youth in a music magazine and not knowing what they sounded like. I'm saying, what a cool band name. I wonder if I'll actually like this band as much as I like the band name and Luckily yeah. for me, I do. Seeing an album cover and liking the art and like, oh, mm -hmm. that looks like it will sound cool. <laughs> you, exactly. And, and I almost feel like I'm lucky in, the, in this era with the accessibility and knowing some stuff. It's great because if you had told me I'd have access to every song from every album I ever wanted for like a flat fee of $9.99 a month, I would have told you you were crazy, you know, growing up. Yeah. But, but I do like that I had to work a little bit harder growing up as well because it made me, you know, have to go through all of the everything from zines. Like you said, you know, combing the stacks, literally like our podcast. Yeah. What's your favorite record store? Sure. I'm going to shout out the Princeton Record Exchange in New Jersey. I'm originally from Trenton, New Jersey. And so there's a very well-known record store in Princeton University town called the Princeton Record Exchange uh, that I've spent lots and lots of time at over the years. Excellent. They're still going strong today? The last time I went was around February. So obviously who knows with COVID, I, I, they still have a Twitter presence and still seem to be going strong. And I think their business model has so much loyalty that it would take a lot to, to put That's them good. out of business. Yeah. John, I really appreciate you coming on. Before we let you go, sure. is there a way folks can follow you and the podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and so forth? Absolutely. Thanks for asking that too. Um, we have a Twitter account. It's at Combing the. Uh, we're in the process of putting together a YouTube channel as well. Probably should be a couple weeks. The podcast Combing the Stacks is available. I think it's now on nine platforms, but all the things that you'd imagine, Apple, CastBox, Spotify, Anchor, and many others. Um, and they're all listed on that Twitter account, uh, at Combing the. 
Outstanding. Thanks again, oh. John. And I look forward to working my way up the countdown as you guys go through the 60s and into the 70s and so on. And maybe we can return the favor and have you on one time once you uh, express to us the album that you might specifically have interest in that's coming down the pike. Absolutely. I'll have to check those top 100s and hone in because you're starting to get into my wheelhouse. Mid to late 60s through the mid to late 80s is kind of young childhood to teen yep. years. And that's where we're going to be for quite a while. So yeah. look forward to it. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate okay. it. Absolutely. Take care of yourself. You can find Bend and Scoop online at our website, bendandscoop.com, or a variety of podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Buzzsprout, TuneIn, Podchaser, Deezer, Podcast Addict, and Listen Notes. You also can follow us on social media at Ben Scoop for both Twitter and Instagram, at Bend and Scoop on Facebook, and you can email us at bendandscooppodcast at gmail.com. If you're looking for another podcast to listen to, I'm part of one called How Many, which features myself and several other friends, including Jesse, Junior, Scott, sometimes Gary, and a few other special guest co-hosts, where we rate and debate all manner of pop culture, music, movies, TV, you name it. Find us on Twitter at How Many Podcast. Bye-bye, lardass!